Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with Online Security, and we're back with another Cert Master Land for Security Plus 701. What we're going to be getting into here is working with threat feeds. Threat feeds are how we share threat intelligence. Threat intelligence is what the attackers are doing. It's the vulnerabilities they're exploiting. It's indicators that you've been compromised. How do you know you've been compromised? Right? Some attacks, some threat actors, they're leaving behind their believe behind behind traces believing behind evidence certain files on your systems that shouldn't be there those are indicators of compromise certain ip addresses on your network something certain mac addresses in your arp table those are different indicators of compromise and there are different types of threat actors that can leave behind different iocs an ioc is simply an indicator of compromise right fortunately we have a variety of different databases that are storing these IOCs, that are storing this threat intelligence, and we can go and interact with these feeds, download them, share them with our community, share them with our team, and use them to prevent us from being attacked. All right, so in step two, they have this sys um, uh, real-time indicator feed that you can go ahead and look at, right? I have it open here, but we're not gonna spend too much time on it in this, in this lab. We're actually gonna spend more time on Alien Ball. All right, we're going to come down to Alien Vault. Alien Vault is on step four. All right, step five. Alien Vault is a, once again, this is a nice repository, nice shared location of different threats out there, different threats, different attacks, different IOCs, different malwares that are being used, different threat actors. This is a nice repository where all this information is stored and, and constant, consistently updated. All right, so what we're going to do is search for this and up here right so we're going to come up here we're going to search for m-i-r-a m-i-r-a-i right and the alien bot is going to pull up all the pulses all the information it has about this malware right we can see a bunch of it here we're just going to click on this guy right here this botnet all right and if we look at that information here we can see the different indicators right one of the indicators of that botnet is hey it's coming from this domain is an indicator of compromise. If you see systems on your network trying to reach out to that domain, you're probably being compromised, right? If this is your system and it's trying to reach out to that domain, you probably have this bot on your computer, right? Here's some more indicators of compromise, indicators to show that you probably have been compromised. If you find these file hashes on your system, you're probably being compromised. If you find these IP addresses on your system, you're probably being compromised, all right? And it says, look over the page, notice the colored bar of the types of indicators, right? You have the colored bars over here. These are the same types of indicators right here. On the selected Alien Vault Pulse page related to this attack, what is one of the types of indicators? All right, file hash. All right, cool. Notice that the first, that the first 10 of many pages indicators are displayed. Yeah, we looked at the domain, the results of the indicator. So essentially what, what we're looking at on this slide right here, on this section, we're just going through this website, right? And please feel free to go through this. Please feel free to get in, uh, become familiar with threat intelligence, right? This is a, Alien Vault is a really, really, really good website. It's a really, really, really good repository that is tracking a lot of malware all across the globe. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the next section. Now we're going to look at a different database, right? This one is called exploit.db, exploit database, something I'm very familiar with. We're going to open this up as well. Exploit database is going to store different exploits that have compromised different people, different systems, different companies, different organizations. Exploits in the wild. It's all shared here on this database. And the cool thing is some of the payload of these exploits are stored here as well. So if you wanted to rerun this in your lab environment, the payloads, you may find them here. They may not be fully functioning, but you'll find them here on exploit DB. All right, so we're gonna take a look. Let's see if they have a certain exploit they want us to look at. Not really. Uh, let's see, do they have a certain one? Not yet. All right, so we'll just go, let's take a look at this website, right? So you can see list of exploits right here. Right now, this is an exploit Splunk 9.0.5 admin account takeover. This is pretty interesting to me since I am also a Splunk consultant. So I'll be taking a look at this later. This came out about two months, three months ago. I'll definitely be taking a look at this. We could filter based off of any type of, a, of exploit. We can filter based off of the platform, based off of the author, based off of the port, 
based off of different tags, right? The tags are pretty cool to filter off of. If we wanted to look at command injection attacks, we'll just use that tag to filter out everything else but command injection attacks. All right, so it says, which of the following is not an option in the list of filters? All right, evil twin, is evil twin in here? I don't see evil twin. I see code injection. I see deserialization. I see authentication bypass. And we see heap overflow. So we're gonna select evil twin. This is not in there. Now, something else that's pretty cool to use is Google's hacking database. Google's hacking database is a pretty dope, pretty, 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 pretty dope. So all we're gonna do to get there is still hosted on exploit.db. We're gonna come over here, Google hacking database, GHDB, just select this. And this is gonna bring us to different strings that we can put into Google to have very, very fine tuned searches, right? Very, very fine tuned searches. A lot of people don't realize that you can utilize Google heavily to do some searching, to look for malware, to look for, to do your reconnaissance, not even look for malware, but just to do reconnaissance and find information about people, right? Like right here, this is gonna look for the file type of a log and in that text of the log, it should say account number. If we open that, if you were to take this and just take it into Google, You would just take it into Google and do something like this, All right? You just paste it in there and you're using Google searching language to try and filter out for account numbers, right? For account numbers, specifically in a file type that has of a log, right? File type of log. So all of these are going to be different logs. You can see dot log. All of these results are going to be different logs because that's all we're looking for in that Google hack, right? Or Google dork as some people call it. And we're just looking for different account numbers all right now uh oh, okay so they had something that they wanted us to look at let's go back one all right and it says select the category pull down list to view all the group types and then select files containing passwords So I'm going to move this over here and we're just going to files containing passwords. The category files containing usernames. We want files containing passwords. Boom. And then we can find a bunch of different strings that we can go ahead and copy and paste into Google to help us look for files that are containing passwords. Pretty cool. All right. And that is it for Google hacking database. We're going to go to the next section. Please feel free to play around with those. I would definitely play around with the Google hacking database and get more familiar with exploit DB. Alien vault is another good resource that you want to be familiar with. You actually want to be familiar with exploit db and, and alien vault for your interviews as well just to so that you are keeping up to date with the latest threats and trends all right so what is the goal of researching and understanding iocs detecting attempting it's successful improving roc reducing this improving response now with iocs let's this is a good question we're, we're not going to be improving rossi because that's that's cost. We're not going to be reducing re resolution costs. So detecting attempted and successful violations, improving response efficiency. Oh, I was wrong. So detecting attempted and successful violations. All right, cool. What type of entities provide threat intelligence feeds? All right, government agencies do. Open source communication groups do. Com commercial organizations do as well. Dark web groups are not really going to participate in that. They want to stay hidden. What indicators are used to locate IOC entries on Alien Vault site? Well, we saw file hash. I believe we saw IPv. We saw hostname, URL, domain. I don't believe we can filter on Macs and OS. Cool. What is the new? What is unique about Exploit Database compared to most other exploit information sites and services? Well, access to the source code. Right, we have access to the source code there. What is a Google Dork? 
type of hacker no list of symbols used to alter search functions when in google maybe a person who does not know no a search expression which may be used to event operators all right we're going with that guy boom and that is it y'all threat intelligence is pretty straightforward there are different ways to write out threat intelligence you have stick reports different way to share that threat intel with taxi if you're not familiar with sticks and taxi definitely take a look at our security fundamentals academy other than that, I will see you all in the next section. Peace.